Good afternoon. My name is Zengo Aizawa. I am the general manager of the Nuclear Power and Plant Siting Division. First of all, we deeply apologize to all of the people residing near Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station and in Fukushima Prefecture, as well as all the Japanese citizens for the anxiety and inconvenience caused by the accident at Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station. While we are currently making every effort to complete Step 2 by the end of this year, I would like to go over the progress being made on the countermeasures implemented over the past month in detail. Please see the handout, Appendix 1, Summary of Progress Status of the Roadmap Towards Restoration from the Accident at Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station, TEPCO. First, there has been no change in our basic approach. Second, in relation to the targets and achievement date, etc., scheduled to be achieved this year, issue number four, groundwater, issue number five, atmosphere, soil, and issue number six, measurement, reduction, and disclosure have been achieved as the step two targets this month. Together with the targets achieved last month, such as uh, issue two, spent fuel pools, issue three, accumulated water, and issue seven, tsunami reinforcements, etc. Our targets have been achieved concerning all six of these issues. Regarding accumulated water, while continuing with the circulating water cooling, we are maintaining the total volume to a level where we are able to mitigate the risk of this accumulated water from discharging into the sea even if there are heavy rains and long-term processing facility outages occur. Furthermore, the RPV bottom temperature has been kept below 100 degrees Celsius for units 1 to 3 since last month. However, due to further cooling efforts, these temperatures have been further decreased. The RPV bottom temperature was 37 degrees Celsius for unit 1, 69 degrees Celsius for unit 2, and 69 degrees Celsius for unit 3 as of November 16th. This is the first time that an explanation of the roadmap progress concerning the temperatures inside the PCV towards restoration has been provided. While the temperatures shown in the graph are the gas temperatures inside the PCVs, these temperatures have a downwards tendency as well as the RPV bottom temperatures. The temperature is 39 degrees Celsius for Unit 1, 70 degrees Celsius for Unit 2, and 59 degrees Celsius for Unit 3 as of November 16th. All of these have been stabilized below 100 degrees Celsius. Our evaluations show that steam generation has been suppressed due to sufficient cooling efforts. Thus, the release of radioactive materials from the PCBs have been kept under control. While we reevaluated the release rate of radioactive materials from the PCV, the current release rate was estimated to be approximately 0 0.06 billion becquerels per hour, which is less than last month's release rate. Uh, 0 0.1 billion becquerels per hour. The radiation exposure at the site boundaries due to this release has been assessed at 0 0.1 uh, millisieverts per year at maximum. The adequacy of the midterm security of the circulating water cooling system is now being carefully evaluated by NISA. Once it has been confirmed that a cold shutdown condition has been achieved, step two will be considered completed. I would now like to go over the outline of the work done during the past one month and our future plans. First, issue number four concerning groundwater uh, construction work of the water shielding wall was started on October 28th and land surveying and boring are underway. Second, issue number five concerning the atmosphere soil, the installation of the unit one reactor building cover was completed on October 28th. Debris removal at the upper parts of units three and four has been ongoing as preparatory work towards the installation of the reactor building cover. The PCV gas control system in unit two began operating from October 28th. Xenon, which is generated by nuclear fission was detected. However, an assessment of the concentration determined that this was not due to a critical reaction, but due to spontaneous fission. In addition, the concentration of hydrogen gas is also being monitored and being controlled via the regulation of the nitrogen gas injection volume. 
Meanwhile, the installation work for the PCV gas control system in Unit 1 and Unit 3 began on October 10th and September 30th, respectively. In light of this situation, we believe that the Issue number five, atmosphere soil target, has been achieved because the work that needed to be accomplished for issue number five in step two has been completed. Next, concerning issue number six, uh, the measurement reduction and disclosure, the current re release rate of radioactive materials from PCVs is being continuously estimated. The measurement of the release rate of radioactive materials at the south side of Unit 3, where measurements were previously not possible, was conducted this time based on the airborne radioactivity concentration at the upper parts of the reactor building. We deemed the results that were reported up to last month to be fixed and not provisional. The current release rate from the PCVs of Units 1 through 3 are estimated to be 0 0.06 billion becquerels per hour in total. This is approximately 1 13 millionth of the release rate at the time of the accident. The radiation exposure per year at the site boundaries has been assessed at approximately 0 0.1 millisieverts per year at the maximum based on the aforementioned release rate. This is lower than the target of 1 millisieverts per year. Per the directives of the Cabinet Office and Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology, TEPCO will conduct monitoring and continue to collect useful information for effective decontamination. TEPCO will share these results and the know-how concerning radioactivity management with the Japanese government and municipalities as we move forward. Finally, TEPCO reported on the operating plan as well as the safety assessment results of the circulating water cooling system on October 17th and November 9th in response to the midterm issues in accordance with the concept of securing the midterm safety released by NISA in early October. NISA is currently conducting a careful review to ensure that midterm security has been secured. In addition, Mr. Edano, the Minister of Economy, Trade, and Industry, together with Mr. Hosono, the Minister for the Restoration from and Prevention of Nuclear Accidents, ordered TEPCO, the Agency for Natural Resources and Energy, and NISA to formulate a midterm and long-term roadmap towards the decommissioning of Units 1 to 4 at Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station on November 9th. Per this order, TEPCO is currently preparing the roadmap.